All right, so I thought I'd do a video on how to modify the fan shroud for an R520 so you can have powered GPU support. And I have my sacrificial one here because I do plan on leaving this server intact. So I pulled one out of another R520 that I don't care about that's going to get parted out and recycled. So I'm going to do a little camera repositioning here. Let's see if I can do this on camera. I'm not going to do all of it on camera because some of it will involve making noise. It's going to sound annoying. But, um, we'll start with finding my tools. I don't know how this is all going to work. I'm kind of winging it since I don't have a good way to cut plastic. Really, it'd be nice to have one of those oscillating tools. Yes, yeah, see, this won't cut that. So you're going to have to cut these nubs off. And I think whittling at it with a razor blade is going to be the way to go. Maybe not. I think it's going to require, I have a hacksaw blade that I plan on using in other spots, but I think I'm going to use the hacksaw blade. So I'll be back after I hack these off. All right, well, the hacksaw blade worked great. You can see where I scuffed it. Basically, I just took the blade, held it flush against the plastic, and then went back and forth. I didn't get it perfectly, so I'm going to clean this up a little bit with the razor blade now, hopefully. Man, even those nubs, watch the fingers. Even the slight nub just doesn't want to get through there. I don't think they'll be in the way, but um, they might, so better off just having them gone. Um... And then I would consider hitting this with some sandpaper, just kind of smooth it out. And you'll also want to, um, once you're done with this, making the modifications, I'd probably uh, run it under the sink under some water just to clean off all the plastic residue. You probably don't want that in your fans. I don't think dust will melt, but plastic will. <laughs> So, not perfect, but those nubs are gone, for the most part. I would like, like to have this a little smoother. Hard to do this while standing and holding the item. My other hand. I'm digging under this plastic a little. My expectation with this razor blade was it would just kind of skate over the surface and shave layers, but uh, apparently ABS plastic's a little bit harder than I thought it was. At least that's usually what electronics are made out of. There we go. Happier with that. So the next thing is going to be to cut a cable channel, and since the saw worked so good, yeah, we'll, we'll do it with 10 snips. I want to see how the 10 snips work. I thought about cutting it this way, um, see that shows correctly, but I don't want an edge for the cable to rub on that's going to be hard to deal with, so I'm going to cut it this way more on the inside rather than the actual side, and I think these will get right through the plastic just fine if they can cut through metal, yeah, so I think I'm going to kind of cut in the middle of this radius here. Try to match up with my cut. I just snapped right off. I would definitely uh, make sure this edge is nice and smooth though because it will be in contact with the cable. And uh, basically with all the fans and stuff going, the server is vibrating, whether you can see it or not. And it will eventually wear through the cable. Probably not in the life of the server. But it doesn't take that long to just give us a nice touch of sandpaper. I'm using some 100 grit. And I mean, it's definitely a lot smoother. Let's hit it a little bit more. Yeah, I feel pretty good about that. Now, the hard part's going to be cutting out this section. Um, basically, oops, I want to extend this opening down towards the bottom of the tray. 
I could try cutting it with tin snips. I don't think I can unlock them. But I don't think I'm going to be able to get in there very well. Yeah, it's going to be kind of tough to get in there. So I think what I'm going to do is use the hacksaw blade. And that was actually the main reason I grabbed this, is because it'll fit through that opening. And I'll just hand hold it and um, cut all the way down to the bottom. And then see what, what it takes from there to potentially just snap it, since this side snapped just fine. You could put the blade through and then put your handle on it, but I'm lazy. So I'm going to cut away at this and I'll be back. Okay, so I've cut this down with the hacksaw. Actually, it wasn't too bad. It took about a minute or so. A little noisy. Um, but now i got to break this off. And this uh, stabilization fin here is making that difficult. Oops. The stabilization fin here is making that difficult. So... I'm probably going to cut into it from the side. I think I'm just going to do that on camera. Assuming I can actually stay in frame. I'll zoom out a little bit so it's easier. So I think I'm just going to let the blade ride along the uh, bottom of the shroud as a guide. And I'm just going to cut straight into this fin here. Try to do it over my trash can so I don't get plastic everywhere. Shouldn't take too much effort though, it's pretty thin. Yeah, just like that. And I'm hoping, I'm just going to take both my thumbs and I'm going to push forward with it. I'm trying not to cut myself in the process. Nope, that is still fairly sturdy. What I might have to do is uh, notch some of this out so I can get at it with the hacksaw. I'm just trying to make the cuts as clean as possible because I don't want to have to do a boatload of sanding since uh, cables will be going through this area. Let's see here. I should be wearing my safety glasses for this. I would hate for a piece of plastic to blast me in the eyes. It's uh, a little bit more stubborn than I thought it'd be. There we go. Kind of rips and tears, so. Once you get it going, I think, I think it'll just kind of work its way out. Alrighty. Yeah, I'm not happy with that. I think I have it enough where I can probably just clean it up. I'll just clean it up with the hacksaw and uh, show what it looks like. I'll be back in a second. Alright, well there's the finished product. It's not pretty by any means. I'll zoom in a little bit more and see if it'll focus. But it's good enough. It gives me a bigger opening for airflow over the Tesla graphics card along with the routing path for the cable. And I think this will be basically perfect for what I need. But first I need to clean this up before I put it in the server, and then I'll be back. Alright, well I'm back. And uh, I opted to just blow it off with some compressed air, and then I wiped it down with some rubbing alcohol. I would still probably personally recommend running it under the sink or something, and then drying it off real good if it were for permanent use. But, yeah. So let's crack this open. And uh, see how it goes. And basically to do the modification, it seems like a hacksaw, well, any small serrated blade and um, some tin snips and sandpaper should be good enough. Now in theory, this will fit behind the fan shroud just fine. Yeah, I'd say those are comfortable tolerances. And we'll grab the card. Try and do this with a tripod in the way. It's always fun. Plug power in. And get the card finagled into place. There we go. Yeah. 
And my uh, custom-made cable is a little too long, but I think it's going to work. Just kind of put a little wavy bend in it here, and eventually once it warms up and sits long enough, the copper will take a liking to its new home. So, yeah, we will uh, get this latched in and cover on oh, the camera. <laughs> Actually, I want to see. Nope, that doesn't do anything. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that uh, fitment, though. It looks really good. And, uh, yeah. So I'm going to do a power-on test, and I'll be back. All right, well, we've got everything running now. Kind of having the same uh, operating conditions as my previous video now. And uh, running a little bit cooler at the moment because it's not under full load. But you will notice that the fans are actually fairly quiet. I'd say the music from uh, Heaven Benchmark coming on my laptop almost feels as loud as the uh, fans are. But uh, thermals are about the same. Let me zoom in here a little bit. Maybe a little more. We're not too far off thermally, but the fans are a lot quieter, so there is that. I don't feel like fiddling with iDRAC to max out the fans to see what the maximum cooling potential is. But at least I can tell that there's a difference. Now we'll throw Furmark into the mix, which will hopefully max things out power-wise. Yeah, we're hitting the 250 watt TDP limits. You can kind of feel the heat trickling out. There's definitely not as much airflow um, as I feel from my RF 720s from stock air or stock fan speeds that is but uh yeah i'm actually hitting this harder too i just realized because i wasn't doing the 1080p for mark i was doing custom let's see if i can cancel this and i was doing the custom preset which actually has 1080p anyway so i guess whatever <laughs> But, yeah, it's drawing the same amount of power and generating a little bit more heat, but it's also a lot quieter than it was. I feel like with the airflow actually being ducted, though, with the shroud, so right now it's being ducted through the CPUs. Oh, where's the old shroud? Oh, here it is. So right now... The air is still being ducted down into the CPU heat sinks, which would be about here and here. Um, but also, since this opening is bigger, a little bit of the air is getting diverted into the um, GPU now. So, I think it'd be a worthwhile modification if you wanted powered GPU support for your R520. Well, it wasn't that bad to do. A little bit of cutting, a little bit of um, sanding, just for sanity's sake. And yeah, gives you some some more options and more functionality with your R520 if it's something you're still using. So hopefully that's interesting and thanks for watching.